to be different. But he asked us, where do you expect these numbers or these chemical shifts to be at? Okay, that's called chemical shift. Is the place in the NMR, yes or no? Yeah. We are doing proton NMR, mm -hmm. so, so the nuclei that yeah. we are looking at is the hydrogen, yes? Mm -hmm. But most of the time we refer to it as the group, the entire thing, even though these hydrogens have to be on a carbon. Yes? The hydrogens cannot be on anything else. So I want you to tell me the chemical shift for those groups. Where is this going to be at on the NMR? Is it going to be towards the right hand side? Is it going to be towards the left hand side? Is that 1 ppm, 3 ppm, 5 ppm? This is SP3 hybridized, yes? Yes. It will be from like 3,000, no, NMR. So it will be from 1 to 2, yes? From 1 to 2. The multiplicity you expect here, let's say this is, let's say, whatever, 1.5 ppms. Where is this one going to be at next to a 12. electron withdrawing Trans element like yeah. oxygen or halogen? Uh -huh. Where is it going to be at? Around uh -huh. what? Uh -huh. Around 4, four. ppms, yes. Yeah. The multiplicity of this signal is going to be what on the NMR? Guys, what's the deal? Yeah, that's the... Uh, Am I saying this for the first time? Maria, what's the deal? You said three. Oh, that's three. Yeah. Three what? Triplets. Is that called three? Why'd they teach you at a famous campus where you did an MRI? Huh? That three is called a triplet. Yes? yes? There's two hydrogens. This signal is next to two hydrogens. This is going to be a triplet. It looks like that. This signal at 4 ppms is going to be what next to three hydrogens? Four. Four. Quartet. 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 Yeah, thank you for uh, fixing my English. <laughs> Quartet, okay? Yes? What is this going to be? This is going to be a signal. Where could this be? Um, well, it could be in a whole lot of different places, okay? So sometimes the carboxylic acid one is on 12, 14, <coughs> you know, something like that. So let's say, let's say this is 7 ppms. And you have peaks around this region. And you can't tell what they are. What are they? This is a benzene ring, okay? Benzene ring. Now, you can tell stuff from the multiplicity of this benzene ring, yes? Let's say you have something here and then something here. Are these two hydrogens the same, yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. These two hydrogens are the same. I mean, this hydrogen on one side, it has R1. This hydrogen on one side, it has R1. And it has this hydrogen. R1 type of hydrogen because of symmetry. And this <coughs> type of hydrogen, is it the same as that? If this R group is different? No. It is different. So these are another type of hydrogen. But this hydrogen and that hydrogen are, are the, the same, same, yes? Yeah. So this signal and that signal is the same. Mm -hmm. You can't tell. But because wow. this hydrogen is being split, or the multiplicity of this hydrogen is one, two, three bonds away from this hydrogen, this will split that, yes? And that will split this with the same coupling constants, which I don't talk about in this class. So A is going to be a doublet. And this one here is going to be next to one plus two is, I mean one plus one is two. 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 That is going to be another double. Yes or no? So sometimes in the NMR, if you see two doublets, one doublet there, one doublet here, around seven mediums, that will be a disubstituted or a pair of substituted benzene ring. Okay? Now the integration here 
will have to be a what to what? It's one to one? It's a one to one, yes. It is a one to one. Of course, this is not one proton. It is two. So on the test, I may give you something like this. And I'll tell you, uh, where's the aldehyde peak at? Look at the paper. 10. Where's the on the high peak at? 10. 10. It's an on the high peak at around 10 ppms. If I tell you that this peak is a uh, integration of one or integration of one H, and I give you other stuff on this side, you have to be able to calculate how many they are. Yes? So from the NMR, I may tell you which one is one. Okay? Yes? And by you measuring that, what are you going to measure that with? A ruler? A ruler? Finger. finger. Yeah, you got to measure it with a finger. You might not have a ruler on the test. What do you think this is? <laughs> like Harvard or MIT or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go like that. That's okay, one. that's one, so that's that has two. to be two. two. Okay, and that one must be three. three. <laughs> that's the way it is. Sometimes it's not exactly what it's supposed to be. Sometimes it's a little bit more. If you don't have anything that is a multiple of it, then that is not a one. That what is it then? Has to be like a through or a two. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so if there is something like this. Something like this, this is not a one, yes? Because this is not twice that amount. So this has to be a two, and that has to be a three. Pitbull. You have questions? No, no. So, let's say I give you this. You analyze this. This is going to be
So tell me, guys, what does this tell you? Aliphatic. Aliphatic, which means SBT hybridized, yes? That means carbons with hydrogens only, yes? Now this tells us that these carbons with hydrogens on are next to what? Are they next to a halogen or an oxygen? Not an oxygen. They're not next to an oxygen, they're not next to a halogen. They could be next to what? CH2. They could be next to carbon double bonded to something else. Okay? Now what we have here is, what's this group here? It's a carbonyl. Yeah. Yes? Now, we have how many carbons? Three. Three carbons. I draw a chain. Three carbons, yes? I gotta put an oxygen somewhere. Is this an OH? No. It must be a carbonyl. I can put the carbonyl here, or I can put the carbonyl here. Yes or no? If I put the carbonyl here, what is that and this going to be? If I put the carbonyl here, that will be this chemical here. And in the NMR, we are going to see a peak for the aldehyde. Do we see a peak for an aldehyde there? No. So this cannot be an aldehyde. It has to be a ketone. I got to put six hydrogen somewhere. Here's three, and here's three. Yes? What, is this CH3 the same as that CH3? Yes. 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 yes, they are the same. Do they split each other? No, they don't no. split each other. So it is a single. Okay? One, two, three. <coughs> they split among the how do you know they don't split each other? Because there's no hydrogen in the middle. It's more than four months away. Four months away. There's something called long range coupling. You don't need to know, yes? If you were taking spectroscopy, it'll be a different story, okay? Unfortunately, you're not taking spectroscopy. You want another one? Yes. Those are simple, yeah? Yes. It's very simple stuff. That's how he likes it. You like it? Yeah. Like Can I give us something like this on the test? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? give you this, this makes things a little bit simpler, yes? Yes. But what I want you to do is, for this one, I want you to calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency first. Oh God, that was last semester. That was last semester, huh? <laughs> I want you to calculate the IHD. Because the IHD will tell you what? A combination of double bonds, rings, Aviste, what's the equation to calculate IHD, my friends? 2n uh, plus 3. 2n plus 1. 2 what? n plus 2. Huh? 2n plus 2. I don't know the 
understand. Why do you do expect to have over shift? Yes. Why well, do you expect my minus what you have? Over Divided by 2. And then you take into account the other pieces, like the oxygen and the oxygen. Yeah. Like, oh, if I'm adding nitrogen, you add one of subtract. Yeah, but it depends. It depends on the confusion of you add or subtract. Different equations use different. But let's say the IHD is what you expect to have if there were no double bonds for seven carbons, yes? How much is that? Seven times 2 is 14 plus 2 is 16. Forget about the oxygens, yes? Minus what you have. What you have is 6. How much is this? Hello? 10. 10 divided by 2. Because every time you make a double bond, you take two hydrogens away. Yes? How much is this? 5. Five rings? Yes, you have five rings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a combination. That's a lot of IHDs, yes? Mm -hmm. When you have that many IHDs, you can only but guess you have what? Benzene. You have a benzene ring, yes? That tells you what? Aromatic. This is aromatic. aromatic. That tells you that this is aromatic. aromatic. You did not need to do this to find that out. Okay? No. Okay? But many things are telling you here that you have a ring. A benzene ring. But on top of that, a benzene <laughs> ring will have how many IHDs? Ring is one. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Plus one is four. I have one IHD left, which is this peak here. And what is that peak? A carbonyl. I mean, I have seven hydrogen. I mean, seven carbons. Yes. This is how many? Six. Six. That must be the seventh carbon. Yes. And what is it going to have attached to it? O H. An O H. Which is what that is too. Yes. Because that is a carboxylic acid. Is there a way for you to know if that is really a carboxylic acid on an NMR? I'll tell you, but you don't have to know. Okay. If you run this in D2O, you know what deuterium is, D2O? You ever heard of H2O? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, yes. H2O and D2O. D2O is hydrogen, uh, has three isotopes, yes? And this is one of them. It's called deuterium. The other one is tritium. And the first one, what's the first one called? <laughs> uh, you don't have to know. So, because there is deuterium in here, it will go and exchange with this hydrogen. You cannot see deuterium in the NMR, in the proton NMR, because deuterium is not proton. For other reasons, too. So, it will exchange, and what is going to happen is if this is a carboxylic acid, because the acid is acidic, yes? And it will take a proton from water and it will give the proton to water. If this is a carboxylic acid, the signal will disappear. If it is a carboxylic acid. If it's not a carboxylic acid, it's a crazy aldehyde. Would it lose that proton? Hello? No. no. It will not lose the proton. If it is an aldehyde, it does not lose that acidic proton. So you can tell if you have a carboxylic acid by doing that deuterium exchange. You don't have to know that for this class. Could it be in the MCAT? You, do you know? I don't know. You want another one? Yes. You want it harder or you want it easier? How do you show two rings? 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 Show two rings on <laughs> for that? Not for that. Not for that one. You can't have But an example where you have two rings. How do you show it on the I mean, it, it depends. Like let's, say, let's say they didn't give you a formula and they just know that you have a benzene, but how do you know if you have one benzene and two Well, I mean, you have to have some other type of information. Yes. You need to have either one of these things or you need to have the mass spec of it. 
in the mass spec, you'll get a Two carbons with six hydrogens and an oxygen. 
Singlet or doublet or triplet? Singlet. Okay, very good. What does that mean? We have carbons with hydrogens on it, yes? Yeah. SP3s. And they're singlet. That must, they are not getting split by each other. Okay? They are separated by some. And this a thing that they are separated by. Do I have a carbonyl here? I don't have a carbonyl. Is this an alcohol? No. It's an alcohol, there's no alcohol peak. It is around something that is 3.5, 4 ppm. This is next to, these carbons with hydrogens are next to an oxygen. That only gives one function of group. What function of group is that? Ether. Yes? Is that what you guys did? No. No. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You can, what did you think it was? How can it be an alcohol? There's no big fat peak here. This could not be an alcohol. There's no big fat peak there. Not an What else could it be? Why do we have Huh? Why do we have there are six hydrogens. With three carbons, with two carbons, can't be a double bond. The IHD here, we calculate the IHD, yes? Uh, six, I mean, two times two is four plus two is six minus six divided by two is zero. No IHDs, no double bond, no ring. That's all right. It's a lot of things to keep in mind, okay? The, do the other one there, it's a little bit of a pain. So you think about it, then I'm going to give you another hint. Vista, what do you think? I know you can't draw, but... I'm not asking you for the name. Tell me. How does it look like? CH3, CH5, CH20. Okay, 
let's try to do it, okay? Maybe on the test I give you a mass spec or I give you one of these, okay? So you have an idea. But this is telling us what? This here. SP3? SP3 hybridized. This is telling us? Carbon yield. We have to have a carbon yield. It's telling us that these two peaks are between those numbers. They must be next to what? Next to the carbon yield. Is this one next to the carbon yield? Hello? No, this is not next to the carbon yield. These two are next to the carbon yield. Okay? So, why? How do you know that? How do you know? Because it's in between the 2.0 and the 2.0? Yes. It's because from around 3 ppm, I don't know how many times I've said this already. Look in your face. You want more? Oh, you weren't here? You were here, man. Yeah, yeah, I got two. But well, nobody has anything now. Not this one, thanks. I have to. Yeah, no. Who was not here that day? Just, just two papers on Saturation. It doesn't matter what you call it. What it is is the alkane minus the number of hydrogens you have divided by two. Because each double bond will take two hydrogens away from it. When you calculate this, it will give you a combination of double bonds and you know more double bonds or triple bond, triple bonds or rings. A ring has how many HDs? One HD. A double bond has how many HDs? One HD. A triple bond has many, how many HDs? Two HDs. Okay. Right? The alkane. So the alkane, if I have two carbons, will be two times two. Yes, plus two. That's the rule. Two N plus two is an alkane. An alkene is two N, yes? Without worrying about the oxygen. Some of them we have to add, some of them we have to subtract. We're not gonna go there, yes? because it's not organic one. So 2n plus 2, two, plus, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So that's where that 6 came from. Minus the number of hydrogen is, it actually has, which is 6 divided by 2. 
Where were we? We were looking in that paper to see where allylic hydrogens are at. Not vinylic, but allylic. Allylic means what? We are looking at a hydrogen that is next to a double bond. Whether this double bond is carbon-carbon or carbon-oxygen, still the same. Where is this at? Look at it in the paper. It says around 2 ppm. So this is around 2 ppm. So I can't write them both at 2 ppm, yes? So I write them from 2. So there is a carbonyl because I can see it here. It is not an aldehyde, yes? Mm -hmm. It is not an aldehyde. What else does it have to be? If it's not an aldehyde, what else could it be? It is a carbonyl, but if it's not an aldehyde, mm -hmm. what? It's, it's a ketone. It's a ketone. This is a singlet. How many hydrogens is this? I mean, if I measure this, that is not, this is not double this, yes? It's not double. If it looks double, then do it less because it's not double. So if this is one, I don't know what that is. Uh, how much is that? So if you measure here and you measure there, divide this by that or this by that, it won't give you a whole number, yes? So this is a two hydrogens and this is a three hydrogens because the integration is not double that. So what, how much is this one then? Two. two. This is two hydrogens as well. And I have, I am in the presence of a triple and a quartet. What does that tell you this is? This is a CH2, CH3. Yes? This CH2, CH3, and this side is a CH3. That is a singlet. And this is a quartet next to the carbonyl. So this singlet and that quartet should be close to each other because they're both next to the carbonyl. That's what they are. And this is a next to two hydrogens. That's a triple. Yes? That's what Labiste said, right, Labiste? That is what he said. But he couldn't name it, though. He couldn't name this. One, two, three, four carbons. So this is called, it would not be called 2-butanol. You can say 2-butanol. It is where the carbonyl is, but 1-butanol does not exist, yes? So you can just call it butanol, but it's 2-butanol. Yes? He said, why don't you know any naming? <laughs> Your answer was supposed to say, you don't like naming, so I don't know any naming. <laughs> that, that, that was what I wanted. That's all right, you disappointed me. You want another one? It's not good. That's good. You want to continue doing these forever? Uh, what do you want? Mass you want mass spec? No. <laughs> okay, on mass spec, I'm going to give you questions about mass spec. Because mass spec, what we did mass spec for five minutes? Less than five minutes. <laughs> Mass spec is used when you come up with this structure, you look at the mass spec and see if the molecular weight belongs to that structure. Yes? Because when you look at it, you can't tell. Not from what I have taught you anywhere. You can tell a lot from the mass spec, but I didn't teach it to you. No, this doesn't look like that, okay? This is called the molecular ion peak, yes? It is the peak that is further to the right. It is the molecular ion peak. That is the weight of your molecule. Yes or no? That is the molecular weight of the tallest peak. What is that called? Base peak. Tallest peak is called base peak. Can you analyze a mass spec and get structure from that mass spec by itself? It will be difficult to get the structure from a mass spec. You got to be a beast. Okay. We're not beasts here. 
I'm just humans, I don't like naming. That's all you have to know. You want to know more? I could teach you more if I test you on it. You want more? More for best spec. <laughs> What do you think, La Vista? Mr. Sacco. This is 
Carbonyl. So this is SB2. That's SB3. This is what? going to be a benzene ring. So it looks like a benzene ring to me. Uh -huh. So this is what you do. I have a benzene ring and I have a carbonyl. Yes? Uh -huh. But I have two oxygens on this thing. So where am I going to place the other oxygen? I have a singlet here, yes? Yeah. And this singlet is around four, four ppm. What that means is that this is an isolated carbon with hydrogens. Must be a CH3, yes? Must be a CH3 because you cannot have this structure, yes? I mean, you could, but you cannot have something like this at the end of a carbon chain, yes? You can't have that. There has to be something else attached there. It could be a CH2, okay, with a halogen on it. It could be. But it doesn't have halogens. It has two oxygens. So I gotta place an oxygen somewhere. I am going to make this with an oxygen there, yes or no? Yes. Can you get to this point? Yes. Carbonyl, and I need another oxygen, I gotta put it somewhere. I put it here, I could put it on the ring. Okay. If I put it on the ring, it might end up like that, or it could be an ether. We're not there yet. There's one thing at a time. There's one thing at a time. So, does it look like we have an OH somewhere from here? No, we don't have an OH. We do have something at 4 ppm, which means that whatever I have is next to, is it next to the ring? No, it's not next to the ring. It is next to the oxygen, so it can be at four. So that's a CH3. All you need to do is connect that to the ring. So that's this. <coughs> Try to do that one, which is very similar to this, yes? No. Is no. To the carbon? This is next to the carbon to the carbonyl. Okay. So that would look like that. That's my stuff. Don't say it. Don't say what? <laughs> you have to write that. <laughs>
I wish your lab professor had time to do this with you. <laughs> they spend no time on it. Nobody spends time on anything. They don't teach it anymore. They're Only like I try to spend time on it. Supposed to learn it in Mr. Lesson. Mitch Rodriguez here. Yeah, we had a test on all this last year. And we were like, what? It was a nightmare. And the whole test, it was like. And it's not done yet. Next time, it's going to be done. Yeah, but the last yeah, year, on the lab, yeah, our lab test. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have like five experiments, which is that. Wow. In and out, all reactions. Good, so you must have learned all of that. In no, he didn't teach it. <laughs> so 
he was like, so I'm supposed to, I'm supposed, they're supposed to test you on what I teach you. That's what he you, said. You're you supposed to learn in this class. Can you call him and tell him now we know? Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Who? Dane Candlebell. Yeah. That sounds complicated name to me. <laughs> He's from a we call conference call him. <laughs> I don't know, guy. I can send my homeboys. <laughs> okay, guys. So, what is this? So, what does that? Oh, it's alcohol. That is an alcohol. Yes. Yes. And so we have an OH. And what type of SP2, SP3? So we have here dye substituted benzene ring, yes? Dye substituted benzene ring. This dye substituted benzene ring has to be para. It doesn't happen like this all the time, okay? That's just so you know. Oh, because of carbonyl and oxygen. Because that's a double and that's a double. There is other combinations, I'm not showing them to you. What else does it have to have? It has to have a carbonyl, and it has to have an OH, and it has to have what else? Carbons with hydrogens. How am I going to put this? Is that three, three hydrogens? How am I going to put all this together? Carboxylic acid. Huh? Let's do this. I'm going to put the CH3 here. How about that? Where is this going to be at? Tell me. Is that the correct yeah. chemical shift for this? No. 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 Well, yeah, Why not? Where do you expect it? Yeah. 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 It's next to a carbon double bond. Yeah. yeah. That is a standard. That's a carbon double bond single. That's okay. That's fine. Why not? Uh, In a carboxylic acid. The other one has to be a carboxylic acid. Now, is that correct? In the NMR, do I see this peak? Do I see that peak in the NMR? No. 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 Do I see it? It's 12. I don't see it. If I don't see it at 12, then it's not a carboxylic acid, yes? No. So, this can't be here because it's not a carboxylic acid. And that's okay if you did this structure, yes? But it doesn't fit. I'm sorry. You got it erased. If it's so, wrong, it's I got to put the OH here, oh. and I got to put the methyl group next to the carbonyl, and here's the carbonyl. Does that fit? What are you confused about? No, that's, yeah, that fits. Here's a carbonyl. Yeah. Here's that CH3, signal. That's 2.5. Yeah. 2.5, and here's uh, the OH. Seven, yep. This is disubstituted benzene ring. With a double of doubles. Yeah, that fits. That fits. Where's the same for the alcohol? The big, the big, the big you don't see it? It happens. But no single for the alcohol. You're right. Let's say, sometimes you don't see it for real. There you go. But then it's in the wrong right place. The OH? The OH should be more correct, no? The OH is wherever the hell it wants to be. <laughs> when you draw that little yes. circle more towards the center of the clock. Why do you want that? When you draw the little circle more towards the center of the clock. This? Alcohol. Carboxylic acid is at 12. If I run this, guys, this acidic, yes or no? I don't want to get into this, but is this acidic? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. This acidic. Yes. This acidic. Probably you'll have to, you know, this has a lot of carbons. So you might have to do this in methanol. Like you might have to run this in methanol. And if there is deuterium exchange, are you ever going to see this hydrogen in the NMR? No. no. Sometimes you do not see the alcohols. And I told you before, sometimes the alcohols are like little bumps. They're not like this. Not a nice peak. In fact, most of the ones I have done in my life are not nice peaks.
Okay. What happens if this peak would have been at four? Then it has to be next to the oxygen, yes? And that would have made this an aldehyde, yes? Which must have had a peak at 11. Okay? It will be something like this on the test. There isn't a lot more that I can ask you, okay? Any questions, my friends? Now we are going to call that a day. It has been, it has been a pleasure. All good things must come to an end. <laughs>